Yeah, I hadn't seen the film, and I, I actually still haven't seen the film. And I think I just, to be honest, John Malkovich did it in such a way. So did Comfort, so did Ryan Philippe. And I made a pretty clear choice not to do that. And I think that's what, you know, I spoke to Leo after he said it's probably one of the reasons why he got the job is he didn't come in trying to be someone that you're not. Mm. And I think that's a really important thing that I began to realize is that this story is completely different to those iterations. You know, this is a prelude to everything. And so it's, I think it was very important to put my own skin on the bones. And I like that. Yeah. <laughs> and it was exciting to kind of play them at a point where they should be unrecognizable to who they will become because who they think they are going to become doesn't have anything to do with where they end up in a way. And it's kind of nice, like, leaning into that tragedy and, and, and the f comedy along the way. Good evening. Good to see you all. I'm Rochelle Rose. This evening, it's my great pleasure to introduce you to the cast of Dangerous Liaison. Hi. Hi. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, because this is an audience of actors, I want to start asking all of you about your audition for this show and, and how you came to it. I want to hear, was it Zoom? What was that timeline? Did you get the real script? I'm sure you all have slightly different audition stories. It was cast by Robert Stern, who we know cast Game of Thrones, so I'm imagining he knew you, Carice. Um, so should we start with you and then and then come along? Yeah, I, I was very privileged that I didn't have to audition for a change. Um, so I was, yeah, it was really nice. Um, and um, I, I was just infatuated by, by Harriet's writing, f first of all, but also, of course, um, our wonderful um, first female director yeah. and she was just so full of fire and so full of life that I was like I want to be part of this I don't care what I need to act like what I need to do mm -hmm. I want to be part of this the end yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got casted off of a, um, a self-tape um, and uh, I received um, some of the material for Ondine and straight away I was like, this is delicious um, and just got into it and thankfully I was cast and privileged, yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, I, hi everyone. Um, I, how did I get into this? Oh yeah, um, I, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> a long time ago. Um, yeah, I auditioned for Victoire um, and it was a really bad audition. <laughs> And I remember making up a character's name in the audition, but you know, Leo, our first block director, called me back. Um, we killed it. I loved it. And similar to Carice, it was actually Leo who drew me into this show. And she had such a passion about the character and the world. And that made me really curious and just want to be involved in that. So I just want to follow up because you said Leo drew you in. So you're saying that your first audition was not successful as far as you're concerned. It was really bad. But then you're called back in and you're in the room with the director. Yes. So it can't have been that bad. Yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> she, she saw something. I guess she saw something. Um, and uh, I think Victoire grew so much after my audition because she was she's very different to what she was in the audition process. So I think we found that together and that was really nice. Mine's a long-winded story, <laughs> but I, I'd never really done anything, so, you know, I come from Melbourne, I'm from the theatre, really, in Melbourne, and, yeah, and, um, <laughs> but I was doing, I went in for a tape for Robert Stern when I was in LA, and then he said, no, not for that, but there is this show going, Dangerous Liaisons, so I did a tape for him in New York, and then the pandemic hit, so I moved to France, and because I couldn't go back to Australia. <laughs> and I did two more auditions in France. Then I met with Leo on the Zoom as a director session. And she said, we've got you access. This is during the pandemic, by the way. She said, we've got access to, for you to get over to London. So I took a train over to London, did an in-room test with them. Everyone was covered in masks. And I was in a tiny little square box, uh, which is about <laughs> maybe three to four meters away from everybody else. And then did two more tapes, there, two more auditions there. And then I finally got access to leave London because it was I had to be out of the EU for a certain amount of time. <laughs> Sorry, I know it's been long, but it's <laughs> so I moved to Greece and then I was... <laughs> And then I was living in Athens, and I think I must have been six auditions in at this point, and we started doing chemistry reads, and I did two with the wonderful, you know, actors, and then I got a call, and I was at the Temple of Poseidon <laughs> at, like, five o'clock in the afternoon, and 
I was talking to a friend of mine. I'm like, I really wish that job gave. Because, you know, you don't hear back for so long. And it was like November 14 and they called me, six people on the phone. And they said, oh, where are you? I said, I'm at the Temple of Poseidon. <laughs> I just opened a beer. And they said, well, the best place you could ever be. You got the job. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so I've got to ask, six auditions in, were you constantly working with the script? Were they asking you to improvise? What were they asking you to do differently as you went along? I think they were vetting me, you know? I think when you haven't done something and it's such a big project, they kind of really want to put you through the ringer. And I also realized that they had time. It's the pandemic and they were looking for a lot of actors for that job. And I was running the scenes a lot, lots of different actors across from me. But then the final audition was actually with you. Hey. And that was on a Zoom call. Maybe you can take away. Yeah. Um, I was, I, I did an audition in quarantine and then I did an audition with him. <laughs> and then I got it. And then I did a chemistry with you and I was on a spinny chair. I was like, oh yeah. I was like on a spinny chair for all my chemistry <laughs> reads <laughs> and I was using it like mad. Um, yeah, I was compensating for like the lack of corset outfit and everything. It was try I was trying to give myself the charisma. Um, but- um, <laughs> You had it. And, you had and, it. That spinny chair um, is in the show. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. Oh, but I just want to say it's so true. Leo, right? Mm. Like, mm. yeah, she had such a vision and she she really fought for us. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the source material. Every actor has read the play. Um, everybody, I think, has seen, particularly for you two, the film with John Malkovich and Glenn Close. So I want to talk to you all about the source material and, and when you came to it, because presumably you were, even though this is an origin story, presume, you know, what were you looking at? Maybe even, you know, six auditions in, you're probably looking at source material. So what inspired you? And, and for the other characters who aren't maybe in the source material, you know, what, where did you draw inspiration from? I giggled because we have like two different backgrounds yeah. with it, <laughs> yeah. which is like you wanted to come in cold, which is crazy because you have, it feels like so, I don't know. I mean, well, you you know, you read the book and stuff, but you haven't seen the film. No. Uh, and I think that was kind of cool. Yeah, I hadn't seen the film and I, I actually still haven't seen the film. And I think I just, to be honest, John Malkovich did it in such a way. So did Comfort, so did Ryan Philippe. And I made a, pretty clear choice not to do that. And I think that's what, you know, I spoke to Leo after he said, it's probably one of the reasons why he got the job is he didn't come in trying to be someone that you're not. Mm. And I think that's a really important thing that I began to realize is that this story is completely different to those iterations. You know, this is a prelude to everything. And so it's, I think it was very important to put my own skin on the bones. And I like that. Yeah. yeah. And it was exciting to kind of play them at a point where they should be unrecognizable to who they will become because who they think they are going to become doesn't have anything to do with where they end up in a way. And it's kind of nice, like, leaning into that tragedy and, and, and the f comedy along the way. So was that liberating for everybody else as well? Um... <laughs> Um, I actually played Mertoy in drama school. Um, yeah. How did you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was um, familiar with the source material. Um, however, um, I watched the movie and got more more um, invested in it because uh, I think for Andine, um, she's a new character and there was so much opportunity to um, borrow bits and pieces from where um, we see Mertoy later on in the story we know so well. And I spent a lot of time um, just studying some of Glenn Close's movements just to see the little tricks that she had in terms of movement. I found it really fun to figure out um, the little hints of seduction um, and the way that she owns her sexuality but doesn't quite let so much uh, go. I thought the the way of just maneuvering a restrictive costume, for example, and finding interesting solutions for still letting your 
hip sway, for example, was very interesting for me. So I really wanted to study that movement. And then again, um, I had the opportunity to watch Alice move around. And I thought it was such a fresh take that um, I just wanted to embody all of that and let it just percolate and see what landed, um, what was useful for Andine. Um, I love what you're saying so much because I feel like Camille is often like beginning to try and create herself based off of Mertoy, based off of Undine. So that's, yeah. I like love she's that. Beg I love that. begging, borrowing, stealing, like from everyone. I love that you like have her, yeah, in you like that. <laughs> you feel it. Nailed it. <laughs> I, was, I was really <laughs> glad to be sort of in new clothes in a different color, I guess. You know, I've been in red for a long time. <laughs> and to be like a refreshing new white, innocent color, that was really um, a great for me, like a new start. <laughs> Um, and uh, even though they have a few things in common, they are very religious women and are quite sort of distant. Um, I think my character is a very uh, broken, suppressed, de depressed uh, character and, the, and that actually uh, is not actually alive and sort of goes to church not to just pray, for, pray to God, but I think to keep her sanity. Um, because she's dealing with stuff that you'll find out later on about. Um. I was going to ask you about that, though, because we actually we just saw the pilot episode and we don't really find out about your character until later on. And she has this big mystery, which we know relates to Camille's backstory, but we, we don't know what it is. And so we... You know, the, the pious nature of your character is also quite mysterious in unraveling this story. So did you have all of the scripts at the beginning of shooting? How did you calibrate that performance? Did you know where she had come from and where she was going? Yes, I think I knew we had the scripts before we, we were going to shoot. I think the, all of them, right? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, in my head. I, I Maybe I made it all up. <laughs> I just, <laughs> didn't we? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> but we got four. We did get four. Yeah, we got four. Maybe yeah. you had a really good relationship with Leo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I see. This is, I mean, this is all behind the marijuana wall. I don't know what, the, where, where that went. But um, I, we had an outline, yeah. And I, what I was just working with mostly, I guess, is that both um, Alice and Nicholas, what are the, real, the names in the story? Camille and Vamo. Thank you. We are very, We're very a bit jet, jet lagged, so sorry, guys. Um, um, oh, um, that both of them, they, they trigger the, the, the best and the worst in her, like she, and it's connected. And uh, I think it's great to, that the fact that she actually comes alive when she meets Valmont, but also dies inside when she, you know, comes across Camille again. So there's a nice mm. crossover there. Yeah. We very quickly get into very steamy scenes with Nicholas and Alice. Did was there an intimacy co coordinator on set? There, yeah, there was. Yeah, there was definitely. Uh, we had a lot of time with Ito O'Brien, who most of you probably know from her past work. But I mean, I have never done a sex scene before. Um, nor have I ever had sex. <laughs> but <laughs> I was. <laughs> it's <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> but I was. I, well, you know. <laughs> Itro O'Brien essentially wrote the book. It's nice. it's, it sounds <laughs> funny, but okay, Itro O'Brien kind of wrote the book on intimacy coordination. So, I mean, being in her hands, we were in a safe spot. And Alice and I, we got along pretty... That drive of us. What is it? There's those drive, Google Drive of photos of the oh, positions I know. we were trying. Because Itro we like, takes photographs of us throughout, throughout some of the rehearsal <laughs> stuff. Okay. Yeah. And she showed it to Alice and I and instantly fully, fully clothed. It definitely um but it definitely like breaks the fantasy of like yeah. being hot. Um <laughs> you get right into the like intimacy. Because but I like, think that's yeah. the most beautiful thing. Yeah. Like, you know, once you get away from the self consciousness of doing it, like it can be really beautiful, especially the shapes you can make and like the kind of specificity that comes around the suit and certain uh, positions and that. It's very um, but it's quite it is, it's really no, fun it's, and like yeah. you get to I don't know you try so much more stuff because <laughs> <laughs> because you're not like so focused on you're not so focused on trying to please the audience you know or like be enough mm. you know it's character 
Yeah. My chair's feeling so creaky right now. <laughs> so. But you have seen, like, the way in which you work with Ita, uh, I think really is from a place of truth and finding a feeling in the moments and creating something very specific to each different character because I do have a lot of intimacy through it, throughout the show. And I think I was like, oh, you don't want this to be gratuitous and kind of stupid and bodies mashing together. You kind of want it to be proper and real. And when it feels real, it looks real. And... That was a beautiful thing that she did. And that was the other thing that you always say, which is so true, is that she was always trying to make sure it was anatomically and correct. Yeah, exactly. Like, this is doable. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 Real. Yeah. <laughs> Kosa, I want to ask you, most um, audience members probably recognize you from your stunning debut performance in Rocks. Did that... Um, as an actress, did you feel like you had some agency in choosing your next role? Um, uh, luckily, yes, actually. Um, I'm very honoured to say that. Um, and the timing of that all worked out. But I guess, yeah, I think, you know, um, we all want to be employed. And we all want to do good work. So, um, And it just all kind of has been falling in line for me. Um, I think God has been very kind to me. So it's all just been, yeah, coming together. I haven't, it hasn't been difficult so far. So, and yeah, I was very lucky with Victoire. I think um, she was a character I very much built with Leo and Harriet um, and put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into her um, and hopefully put a lot of love into her and respect and honesty in portraying her, especially in a period piece and her being a Muslim black woman and hopefully staying true to that as well. So yeah, it was a lot of work, but we're here and I hope it's good. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting. I, I'm not sure if it's this episode the, when Leslie Manfield's character speaks to her so despicably. And so it's, um, and she's definitely the voice of reason, right, for this character. Yeah. So what, what did you and Leo, what do you think she represents in this story? It's, um, it's a difficult one with Victoire because I think a lot of people see her as like the voice of reason, the moral one, the, the fair one, but... I don't know. I think she's. I think she's human. I mean, she's young. She's only fifteen years old. She's trying to navigate this world, and it's a very difficult one to navigate. Um, and I think she's always combating with what is the right thing to do. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't make the right choices when it's people you love because you think you're making the right choice, right? Um, and I think we see that with her, and she's kind of the catalyst to this destruction by making that choice at the beginning to, you know, do that for Camille. But was that the right thing to do? So, I don't know. I feel like you worked really hard always to make sure that, like, because the story is so arch and caustic and, and we are so, like, hungry for somebody to love and to, mm. for somebody to be a voice of reason, you were so, you know, strong and <laughs> and right in making sure that she was also human and had, you know, um, what's it called? flaws <laughs> like exactly you know? and yeah. that's just speaks to you as an actor like just ah, stop it thank you <laughs> <laughs> and colette i have to ask you because we see you in episode one and then we don't see you again until three or four um can't remember if it's three or four where you come in again um did you you shoot all of your scenes back to back or were you coming and going to presumably a grand location <laughs> it was coming and going <laughs> missing um everyone knows this i missed my dog the whole time <laughs> every conversation involved my dog <laughs> um but i was coming and going and um not only um to uh, to you know I, I it was spread out throughout the whole period which was really nice because i got the opportunity to watch these wonderful talented people here before you um, work and support them and also see um, behind the scenes as well. So, I mean, often you see the work here and it's our faces that is on the project, but there are so many creatives that create this beautiful work from costume to hair and makeup to set design. You are transported not only by our performances, but everything everything that you see um so i am, am yeah i'm not the only actor to do this but i i just wanted to be around to appreciate all of the work so um thankfully um i was welcomed on set 
I was questioned a lot of the time. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was it was really fun. Um, but yeah, I went back and forth. And then were you, I mean, I don't know how much this, I'm assuming because it was television, there weren't a lot of script changes, but it sounds like you were all working with Leo. And I think it would be really easy to fall into that wicked stepmother stereotype. So how did you draw out the truth of your character for this performance? You know what, I have to say, um, at the beginning, I, I really, I really, um, really dug into the evilness. I knew that Andine had some honest reasons as to why she did the things that she did. But it was actually Alice <laughs> that was constantly like, I would always have comments like, um, oh, Andine is so evil. And you would be like, no, but this has happened and this has happened. So you were actually constantly reminding me of Andine's humanity and reason. I was like fallen for Andine the whole time. Okay. Eh? And, and I think you like feel it was, you know, it's, it's sort of present in the show as, as you see. But yeah, I just think like if <sighs> spoilers and stuff, but like just I feel like the you know, the, the empathy I have for you is out of loyalty, but not out yeah, <laughs> of yeah. like any true feeling. Whereas like, I think, yeah, Camille really like reson, reson, I, you got good reasons. <laughs> He's fucking entitled, you know, like. Yeah, you definitely, it was really helpful getting reminded not only by myself, but by you too. So I have to thank you for that. And I was just responding to you. So, oh. you know, it's you. <laughs> <Whatever>. <laughs> So I have to ask, maybe Nicholas and Alice in particular, you know, how it was to work with the great Leslie Manville. <laughs> <laughs> so good, eh? So good. So good. Yeah, you got a lot in that. You got a lot too. She's just so good at bringing um, presence and, like, uh, authenticity to whatever she's doing like she doesn't judge where the character's coming from mm. she just really believes the story that they are telling and i felt like um yeah she she wasn't distracted by trying to be to, by analyzing it or being too smart for it so i got i felt really drawn into her world and her um yeah. i was seduced by Leslie man <laughs> i think there's like a Everyone was pretty like, she came on and, you know, she's a big deal. So we're all kind of a bit like tightened up and wound up a little bit. But, you know, I had a scene with her where it was kind of her first scene and we're all prepped and there's something that she did where she kind of tripped on one of the candelabras or whatnot. And it kind of, and everyone, and as you do, because you're tripping over everything, which way and whatever. But it instantly leveled everybody out and we're like, oh, shit. She's just, she's an actor like all of us. And she, and I think that was such a beautiful thing. When you start to work with her, she holds a space for you as well as herself. And I think that was a really lovely, like, I don't know, space to be in with her. Generous, super yeah. generous and super like, just, and she goes hell for leather. And I love that about her. Mm. And uh, she's really amazing in this series. So I, I really enjoy working with her. She's also really funny. It's funny. I think a lot of people don't know how like, funny she is. She's <laughs> kind of fun to be around and just has a very crazy youthful energy about her yeah it's really enjoyable yeah. yeah those epic ones are like that hey eh? they're all like real professional and they know exactly what to do and then they can peel the orange peel real good and they can stand on the spot and then they can also make all these jerks and like, oh. it's like let's go have a champagne around the corner i'm like yeah please yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Alice, you bear a lot of responsibility in this show, and not least as an actress. Yeah, you know where I'm. I hope you probably know where I'm going. No, I don't. Okay, Sorry. so um, <laughs> um, uh, portraying somebody who's attempted suicide. I'm just wondering how do you how did you prepare? How did you research? I think. Oh, God. I mean, this is such a heavy thing to say, but I guess it's just, you know, I also deeply relate to just suicidal ideation. And I really, um, I really felt for her and I really felt for her um, situation and her condition. And I feel like, unfortunately, um, it's not so far away, <laughs> this kind of deep trauma and sorry if I laugh honestly sometimes I do because when I'm nervous I, I do I do 
Um, I had a emotional well-being counselor on this job who was an amazing person. I don't know. Um, oh God, I, I, it's it's such a incredible like asset to an actor because I think it's so important to be able to see what is. Um, you know, to be able to see what is useful for your character and then um, to remember not to um, abuse yourself to get the performance, you know? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I think that that, um, I anyway find that I really um, shut down when I start to try and um, beg myself for pain, you know, which sometimes I do. <laughs> but I'm like, come on, man. But I, I really have to be um, as honest and, and safe and as respectful <laughs> of my own frail humanity to, to go to those places. Um, mm. And and that lets me feel like I can move through it in a way that um, that doesn't make me feel nauseous. I don't, you know, it's so important not to um, use like this kind of trauma as just a pure means of entertainment. And honestly, like we just had so many conversations about it. I was asking <laughs> all the time, "What are you shooting? Why, you know, do we need to see?" this in that way and we were always just I was always making sure that um the amount of times that we were seeing um her scars was um allowing you to understand the story and and not um glamorize not, it not glamorizing it yeah exactly and, and I hope that we did I hope that we did a good job it was yeah yeah. yeah. Yeah, you put a lot of work into that. Mm. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. The two of you have so many fab scenes together. And I think Leslie Manville says something like, um, your lover is your future enemy, which I think is probably the key to the thing. And there's, there's just so much fun as the balance changes between you with all of the different stuff that's going on between you. Is there a lot of rehearsal? Do you have an idea in your mind of how it's going to go? Because this is how you learned your lines. And then when you're faced with each other, it's completely different. Can you just share what that work experience is like for you both? Yeah. yeah, we actually did get quite a lot of rehearsal for TV. Like we had quite a lot of great time with Leo yeah, and with Ida and yeah. then with Ollie. I mean, we kind of, the directors that we worked with were so, were so hungry and like happy to do it. And so we did really like, yeah. And I mean, we're, I don't know, what do you, you say some stuff. I I've know. been <laughs> talking. I think oh. that there's, <laughs> I think we were given a lot of time and space to do that. And I think, you know, you don't, I think those scenes have so many different ways you can play them. You know, the tact that you can take to get something out of somebody else, it's a plethora of options. And I think what that was the most exciting, you know, I don't really have that many scenes with you. We do have a few scenes. We have a lot of scenes later, but there was something about the stuff that Alice and I were doing that really you go into it you rehearse it once or then you take a little bit of time, you try it again, but then when you start shooting, it's a little bit of just come in and start swinging and see what happens. Yeah. And I really like that. Yeah, I like that too. I felt like we were always on the same team so we could, um, it was kind of, could be instinctual and like try stuff. And I really felt like that with you as well. Like we've, yeah. yeah, I noticed that especially you guys have that beautiful connection throughout it, which is such a important thing to acknowledge as well do you want to both always be like feeling good about the scene yeah absolutely. it's really easy <laughs> though with you guys it just happened with you two yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <it just> and <laughs> i just say you two um because um, i didn't share as many scenes with you um although when we did you guys are so playful and so generous i think that i it sounds like i'm yeah just take it. <laughs> but you guys are so playful. And I, I have to say, it's not always like that on set necessarily that you have people at the center of it that are willing to be so generous. And I have that that kind of set the tone for everybody else, I feel. We had such a good time. Remember Real Housewives <laughs> of the French Revolution? <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to explain that one. <laughs> On the, on the EPK. Thank you all so much for being uh, here with us this evening. It's a pleasure to meet you all and thank you all for joining us. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you very much. Thank you.